Okay, coming off the previous video where we made a sky using gradients, we need to fill in these bits here. All right, now normally I wouldn't do this. I'd normally leave the sky as a separate layer, but there's just a command I want to show you, which you use again and again and again so often that I'm going to mention it now. Okay, I've got my sky layer selected. If I press Control plus E, it takes that layer and it merges it with a layer underneath. So now I've got one layer to work with. I can't remember which version of Photoshop it was. I think it might have been CS5. They introduced this tool I'm about to show you. I'm going to come to my lasso tool, which I always like for doing big, loose selections. I'm going to select this bit down here, this blank bit. And then I'm going to come to Edit, Fill. Now I've been using the background color and the foreground color, but if you come down here where it says Content Aware, click on that, and OK it. Look what happens. Photoshop goes away, tries to figure out what you want to go in there. It'll go and get what it thinks you want and it will stick it down there. Control plus D. That was fast. Now there are times when it saves loads of time. It really is very useful. But it's not perfect. It can make mistakes. Let's go around this picture and see what it can do and what it can't do. OK, let's try this one here where it's got a horizon and some sea there. Come all the way down here. All right, let's try it again. Edit, fill, Shift plus F5. Come on, let's do that instead. Shift plus F5. Save himself a bit of time. Content aware. And Control plus D. Again, that's looking quite nice. One of the reasons this worked is because there's a very, very straight line going on there. Photoshop figures out, okay, straight line, just carry it on. Also, with things like C as well, which is just a kind of a rough kind of fractal pattern in a way. Um, yeah, that can make it really quite easy. It's when you get harder shapes, that's when you get more geometric shapes. That's when things start to go a little bit bad. But let's try this. Come on, let's really push it, see what it can do. Come down to here. And Shift plus F5. Content aware. Come on then. Let's Control plus D. OK, that's not done a bad job. Let's come to here. You can see it's repeated the leg of the man and also this bit, these steps down here, they haven't quite worked as well. Also, you can see just along the boundary, you're getting a bit of a, well, you're getting one C on one side and a slightly different, more blurred C and a slightly different color cast C on the other side. So that's not quite working. This is where you go in and you start using this tool, the clone stamp tool. This will give you a little bit more control. All right, let's do some easy bits first. Give you the general principles. Let's try these bits along here. All right, come to my clone stamp tool. Well, for example, there's that little guy in the water that I don't really want there. Now, as with the standard paintbrush tool, click Control plus Alt, and you can change the size of it and how hard it is. So the way to do it, you press Alt, to define which bit you want to copy from, in which case there's just some waves here. Then you come to another place, and the minute you press your left mouse button, then it will start putting down colors from that area. And you've got a pretty invisible join there. Now my first reaction was, OK, well that worked, let's take it up to here. But if I put down some stuff there, take a look closely at what I've done. Because the waves are larger in the foreground and smaller in the background, I've taken up some larger waves here and slapped them in the background. That doesn't really work. One of the key things when using the clone tool is keep redefining your source point. In this case, I want it fairly close to take out that duplicate anchor. In fact, I don't really like that anchor at all. Let's get rid of it. And I don't really like that bit there. Let's try taking source point there and getting rid of it. That's looking quite nice. OK, the next thing, I want to get rid of this thing here. If I choose a source point here and come down here, I'm going to end up putting down a load of C around there. I don't want that. Control plus Z to get rid of that. The thing to do here is to define my source point along the edge where I want to do it. So then I move my cursor around until I find that lines up, and then I click and start to put down the area. Once I've done that, that'll be the point where I start defining from different points so I don't get too even a spread. This is very subtle, but 
I've just defined a narrow line up there and you can kind of see where you get the waves going along, slightly narrow patch there, and then the waves carry on. That doesn't look very good. I'm going to make my brush size larger and then redefine this. I want to come to here and I'm going to break up what I've done. I can come to several different points to break it up so that you don't get patterns and repeating patterns, which is the enemy of the clone tool. That's the other thing. See what I did there? I got a bit too confident, a bit too carried away, and I put down part of the man's leg there. All right, let's come back here and let's get rid of the man's leg. You can do a lot with the clone tool, but these things you have to be careful of. Let's come over to this part here. This was our big problem part, wasn't it? Oh, well, I've got a little bit of a, a jump in those waves, which I'm not too happy about. So I'm going to define a source point. If I hold Control Alt Right Mouse button, I'll make my brush very, very hard. And if I start putting down points there, whoa, there we go. You can see, because it's very hard edged, you can definitely see what I'm doing. So that doesn't really work. Let's press Control Alt Right Mouse button and make it softer. On the other hand, if you make it too soft as well, and you start doing a load of soft things, eventually you get this kind of mushy kind of effect to it. It's a bit of a balancing act. Now, at the moment, I've got it on completely soft. I'm going to take it down so it's about, say, 30% hardness. And let's try that. Make sure, just make sure I've got the right control point and start putting stuff down. See what I was about to do there? I've got this little, what, tin can, I don't know. I was about to put it down there. That's why it's always an idea. Keep on redefining your control points. Find something that works there. Uh, come down here. A little bit more there. A little bit more there. Now, for this bit here, as before, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I think I'm trying to cram too much information in there with a large brush. Press Alt to find my start point and again wiggle it up a little bit and down till I find where I should be starting off about there. Then take it along. Let's get some of this step in. This is going to be quite a fine balancing act. Let's make it smaller. And Alt. So now I haven't quite got that rock in the way. OK, that seems to be working a little bit, but if I carry on like this, eventually I start picking up stuff I don't want to. So again, keep redefining your control point, take it along there. And I'm getting that pattern repeated there. I want to try and do one or two things to break up that pattern a little bit like that. Now I've done that, make my press larger and I'm going to go back and take a look at some of these waves just to try and break up. Look, see, I've got one, two, three, four, five repeated waves. Well, that's ruining the effect. So can make it a little bit smaller. And let's choose bits from anywhere else to try and break that up. All right, I'll live with that. OK, last little bit here. Make it slightly larger. Come here and get rid of that man's foot and also there's a slight line going on here if I come to somewhere like this and I happily start clicking away there and I come and redefine it again I'm starting to get this repeated patterns repeated patterns the enemy of the clone stamp tool to try and get rid of them as much as you can not only that a little bit going on here is a classic mistake okay I just about got rid of that so now I've got a shadow going on there which comes from nowhere. I'm going to come to my polygon lasso tool and I'm going to take it along here double click and I'm going to press Control shift I to invert it and then I'm going to come back to my clone stamp tool make it a little bit larger and alt. The reason I did that was so that when I get to the edge I don't start clone stamping into the sea again. I've already got a nice hard edge defined there. And a little bit just there, get rid of that. And Control plus D to deselect. All right, that started to work. OK, last few bits. Come back to my lasso tool. Come to here. That rope which is in the middle of nowhere. And press Shift plus F5 content aware fill. And... 
Mm, let's try pressing Control plus Z, and let's try Feather, and feather it by, say, what, 8 pixels? Now let's try Shift plus F5, Content Aware, and OK, and Control plus D, no hard edge, it's pretty much invisible there. All right, magnifying glass, fit screen. All right, there you go. One picture, you'd never know that half of it doesn't actually exist. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.